Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. My name's Alan. Okay, it's been a while since my last video. Uh, I've had horrendous roadworks uh, outside my house making any kind of audio work more or less impossible. But today they've just gone, so I'm recording some intros and outros, voiceovers and whatnot. Anyway, this episode uh, I've been making uh, a few bits and bobs for dungeon kind of decoration. Uh, interesting things that you can just put around and just like just general dungeon scatter really. So first things first, I've got this kind of cool looking lever mechanism type thing. <clears throat> a little cellar door which is quite cute. And then this kind of old dungeon well with a removable lid. So that's what I've been making. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start with a little bit of XPS form and here I've just cut out a few bits on the Proxon using a circle jig. Uh, I could have used individual bricks but I figured this would be a lot quicker, maybe a little bit easier and I would have less glue overflow spillage. So I just kind of uh, stuck all these rings together and used the natural lines in between them as like brick grout lines. And then it was just a matter of etching in a few little brick lines using an X-Acto knife uh, going around the entire thing and hopefully making them all roughly the same size and like i say you could use you know lots of very tiny foam bricks for this this part uh, instead of using these kind of uh, these rings of foam uh, but you know if you do that then you've got to kind of cut them out and texture them separately which is possible but you know, i figured this would be a little bit quicker maybe hopefully and uh, would give at least just as good a result um, but feel free to, you know, try the individual brick method. It says uh, no harm in doing that either. Now those little lines that I etched in with an X-Acto knife are a little bit, uh, a little bit thin, so I'm going to widen them up with this kind of sharpened paintbrush handle, or a toothpick would be just as good. Uh, to widen those lines and make them more visible. Now it's looking very smooth right now so a little bit of texture will go quite a long way. So I have a rock here that's kind of covered in uh, tin foil so I just rub that around the entire thing and then you have this kind of rough looking stone texture. Now I figured this old dungeon well needs a lid. Now I could have used some granny grating here just to kind of create this, um, I guess this grate, this iron grate that could go over the top, but instead I wanted a wooden lid um, that could be removed pretty easily and stored with it. Also it's almost like a mixture between wood and foam, so when you're cutting it do many passes and then just kind of round the edges off with a file. And the undercoat is, yep you guessed it, it's Mod Podge and black paint mixed together. And then a nice heavy grey overbrush around the entire thing. And now back to the lid. I added a little piece of wire there to add, act as a handle and then I just painted the whole thing with a, a nice watered down earthy brown colour and this is just going to go over the entire thing and eventually this will get a wash over the top as well just to kind of really dull it down. Hopefully the balsa wood natural grain will take all that paint really well uh, it does kind of absorb it pretty quickly, so it's well worth uh, watering it down a little bit, make your paint go a bit further. Now I didn't film the washing stage, but uh, I added a black-brown mixture wash to this entire piece. And then I'm going to paint the bottom of the well here with some black 3.0. This is the uh, super matte black paint and it really helps to sell the depth of the well. Okay, so starting out with this kind of lever mechanism, we're going to use some XPS form here and just make this kind of little nook. Uh, I didn't want to just make a, a thing that would go on the floor. I wanted this to have like a wall to it so that you could set it against the side of your dungeon tiles and it would uh, it would fit nicely and butt up nicely against them. I then took some uh, wooden dowel and I've just kind of etched in these lines and filed them in a little bit deeper just to make it seem like those are separate pieces of wood. And then took a piece of XPS foam here and just set this dowel 
into it so that it would look like that. Now I saw someone use these in another YouTube video. These are just like fancy cocktail sticks, but they've got such a cool little detail there on the end that I thought I would get some and use them as like handles for things. And this is an ideal project for that. So I'm going to drill some holes in the kind of base section here of this dowel. And then I will trim down those cocktail sticks and insert them into the little holes so that they look like little handles. And then I can just fit this to the existing nook and now I've got some of these little levers and handles sticking out. And now that that's done I can add some extra wall bits to the side. Remember this piece is going to sit adjacent like butting up against uh, an, an existing dungeon tile so it can sort of be set into the floor and uh, and off to the side so I mean, you'll see it with the final picture at the end but uh, this really helps to sort of sell like that it's a little nook in the wall where someone's uh, in, you know fitted these these levers. I found some little cogs as well in a box and uh, I thought I'd just insert these on the side make it look like a bit more of a mechanical mechanism and uh, just some random cogs you know always goes a long way when you're talking about you know mechanical things and whatnot. All right, we're about ready for painting, so let's try the undercoat with some black paint and Mod Podge. Cover the entire thing and make sure it's all nice and protected. And then the usual heavy dry brush of grey. I do also paint a few of these bricks out in different colours. Uh, things like siennas and tans and reds, blues, things like that sometimes, as you can see there. And this goes on before the washing stage. And I'm going to paint these cogs and gears here with some Rhinox hide because that's a good rusty metal undercoat. Now I've got some holes here in the top and uh, I'm going to poke a little cocktail stick through them just to widen them up a little bit. And these are going to house the chains that will fit uh, for each respective lever. So I'll just feed the chain through the top and then you want to glue it into the the hole that it represents at the bottom above the lever. Just couldn't really film that bit because the camera was in the wrong place. But then just use some glue and really kind of slather it all over the chain just to really stiffen that chain up and make it a little bit more solid and durable I guess. And then once you finish that you can just clip off the chain at the top. I'm not too bothered about it overhanging the top there, it looks a little bit untidy but I mean you can cover that up with something if you wanted. But then just repeat the process and feed the rest of the chains down and I painted them with a Rhinox hide again and now I'm going to add some riser rust which is a citadel dry paint and it's meant for dry brushing techniques and it's just a really good addition to this kind of Rhinox hide rusty undercoat. I think it really picks out all that kind of the different hues of oranges that you get from natural looking rust. I'm going to cover that all over these chains and maybe on the cogs and gears as well. Then I'm just going to cover all of the negative space and bits that won't be seen in this black 3.0 paint. This is a super mega matte black paint. It seems to be quite useful for things like this. And then I thought to myself, what can I make out of this tiny piece of off-cut XPS form? It's about an inch and a half by an inch and a half. Um, I figured, a cellar door, why not? All I need to do is slice it kind of along its diagonal here. And then hopefully we can turn it into this kind of wedge shape. And I've also sliced out some of the edges here a little bit, just using an X-Acto knife. Uh, where that's going to become pretty important towards the, the middle of the build here. So I'll just slice away a few more and then we can start adding the doors. All right, so I'm gonna use some balsa wood for the doors here, just a single piece of balsa wood with a big line down the middle there to kind of separate the two door panels and just etch a few lines in to act as planks and whatnot and using the natural grain of the balsa wood. And then just gonna sit this on top of there using some hot glue to secure it in place. And then that leaves a little border around the edge for the bricks to go in. So using hot glue again, just gonna set some pre-cut bricks into this area, using a mixture of uh, different colored forms here because that's all I have. 
I really want to know where I can get some good pink foam from because it's really quite handy for large projects and I tend to have all this very thin foam but it's not overly available here in the UK so I'll have to try and find some online somewhere. And I'm going to tidy up these side bits here with a little bit of like a thin sliver of XPS foam that's already been textured. Just glue it on and then cut off the excess and then you can cut in a few bricks and things just to make it look a little bit more cohesive with the rest of the build. Now I was going to apply some uh, 3D printed hinges but you know not everybody has a 3D printer and I figured I could use something a little cheaper so I've got these uh, kind of cocktail sticks but they're like arrowhead plastic cocktail sticks and I just cut the heads off them and then stuck them down, painted them black, added a few little loopholes there in the middle uh, for handles and then some little bits of tube against the edge for the kind of the edge of the hinges and then painted them all up in kind of black and grey. Yeah, that guy's all done. I'm fairly happy with the way they turned out given that, you know, I was trying to go for a fairly cheap sort of option and using like offcuts of, of foam that I've already got. I've got too many offcuts on a shelf up there, but I've got loads and I want to get rid of them or use them up in some way. I don't just want to throw them in the bin uh, <laughs> because, you know, recycle and reuse. So yeah, I could have used uh, a few pieces of like 3D printed terrain, like hinges and whatnot. I do like to use like you know little interesting intricate details uh in in my in my builds just to kind of really add some character to, to a lot of the pieces um but not everybody has uh, a 3d printer and they can't just print out candles and bottles and and crates and and whatever whatever they want um so are you i would like to know from you guys uh, are you happy with me using 3d printed bits um, would you prefer it if I kind of stayed away from those designs and create simple, cheaper workarounds that maybe probably don't look as good, but you know they do the they do the job for the and you know I think learning when to use a cheap workaround or a or like an expensive product, I think that's like a, a real skill. Like sometimes the cheap workaround just isn't gonna work at all it's it's too cheap and it, it looks shoddy uh, but other times you know it can it can be worth the weight it can be worth the cost and it can be uh, you know the juice can be worth the squeeze basically um, so yeah I'm gonna leave that up to you guys you let me know in the comments section below if you think uh, I should stay away from 3d printed stuff or just embrace it and just kind of use it all as much as possible in videos um, yeah i'll leave that up to you um so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy this video please feel free to give it a like a little thumbs up there and a comment below i'll try and get back to everybody that i can and also subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell and everything like that i would also like to say a big thank you to my patrons uh for supporting me and and sticking with me here uh, this channel has slowed down a little bit lately but i'm really thankful for you guys you guys are awesome so big thanks to you and anybody else that signs up in the future as well. Uh, I do also have uh, an Instagram set up. Um, if you want to follow me on there, please feel free to do that. I think I'm approaching about a thousand followers on Instagram, maybe. So feel free to uh, bump that number up. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you on there. That's all for this one. Though. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.